Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and to our wedding series. Today we'll discuss groom's attire and what you would wear if you're the groom. First of all, congratulations. You're getting married and that's an awesome feeling. I vividly remember my wedding days and I always look back at it fondly. Yes, you heard right. Wedding days. I had three of them. And no, it's not what you think. It was the same woman every time. But no, I'm not Richard Burton or Elizabeth Taylor. It was a little different. First, I got married in 2009 at New Year's Eve officially. And for that, I wore a black tie tuxedo, single-breasted with a peak lapel. Since I'm from Germany, we also had to have a reception in Germany for all the family there. And it was a little more casual. We had barbecue and grilling, and I wore a navy double-breasted suit with a faint window pane and a regular necktie. And then finally, we had our big affair in the US at a hotel, and I wore a morning coat during the day and a white tie in the evening. Switching outfits is something that was traditionally done in Europe, and you can still find it today for more upscale weddings. As you can imagine, I insisted to change my attire because I love clothes. And when else do you have the option to wear morning wear and white tie in the same day? Never, right? But now back to you as a groom. What should you wear on your wedding day to look your best? Well, the good news is basically you can wear whatever the hell you want or what you and your partner decide. That being said, most grooms that I've talked to that didn't dress up very much for their wedding regret it later on when they look back at their wedding pictures and most of them always want to put their best foot forward. Now, that's on a personal level, but also sartorially. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through traditional outfits and more casual options that men have worn in the Western Hemisphere so you found exactly the outfit that works for you. So first, let's start with the traditional options. A hundred years ago, you had a morning wear outfit and an evening wear outfit. Both of them were tailcoats and they were long because the wife's wedding dress had a train, it was long, and so the tailcoat matched that. Likewise, those long tailcoats were worn with tall top hats because it was all about proportion. A day of a wedding could take place any time when the sun was out, basically, and it was a very classic outfit that men wore in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and even John F. Kennedy wore one on his wedding day. Another famous morning coat wearer was Prince Charles, who had it for his first wedding and for his second one. While in the US or in Europe, it's usually more of an upscale wedding where you can see the groom wearing that. In England, it's very much the standard, and even a rural wedding has a morning coat ensemble for the groom. Basically, it consists of a black or charcoal morning coat with other peak lapels or notch lapels. Then you have a black and white striped trousers, which are also called cashmere trousers, because there used to be some cashmere in them. Then you have a waistcoat, which is either single-breasted or double-breasted, usually in a gray that's slightly contrasting, or a buff color, or you can go with other colors, such as light blue, depending on your choice. And then you have a white shirt. Traditionally, it had a detachable color. Today, it mostly has a soft turn-down color with double cuffs. And then you wear either a bow tie in a silver and black pattern, which is also called wedding tie, or a regular necktie. Traditionally, men would wear an ascot, which is hard to find these days because it's not the ascot that you wear casually around your neck. It's one that is tied with a pin. And while it looks very formal, it definitely has a little bit of a vintage look to it. For a top hat, you can either go with a gray one or a black one. I prefer them to be in silk, because they're really, really elegant that way. Then you want to have a white pocket square. You can have gloves, either in shower yellow or in gray. Those are the most classic options. You want black Oxford shoes, or you can have Balmoral boots in black, or you can have, let's say, button boots or Balmoral boots with an insert. To learn more about boots and shoes, please check out our shoe guide on our website here. Since it's your wedding day, you definitely want a boutonniere flower that is not pinned onto your lapel, but tucked through the buttonhole in your lapel. As you can see, this outfit is quite exquisite and it's the most formal thing a groom can wear during the day. Now, if you have an evening wedding or if you want to change, you get a white tie tailcoat ensemble. It's likewise a tailcoat, but it's cut differently than a morning coat. It's all black. Your pants have a 
double striped galon down the side, you wear a white stiff collared shirt with detachable collar, you wear a Marcella waistcoat and then a bow tie. It's all white. So to add a little dash of color, usually you either add colored socks or a colorful boutonniere, such as red or purple or pink, are very classic choices that look very great. And you also want a bow tie that is self-tied and never pre-tied. To learn more about how to tie a bow tie, you can check out this video. And for a selection of white tie bow ties, especially single end ones and ones with a fixed neck size so you don't see any adjusters, which is very important because you have a detachable collar, please check out our shop here. For shoes, you wanna wear patent leather, capless Oxfords or opera pumps, which are very, very elegant. And you don't want slippers because you want a deep cutout to show your socks. Because you have the tail coat, you want a black silk top hat. You don't want a chapeau clock or an opera hat that's collapsible, and you don't want anything gray. And ultimately, it's the most formal outfit a man can wear today. It truly makes you feel amazing, and I experienced that myself when we danced to a swing band. Problem is, both the morning coat and the tail coat are body coats, and so they only look good if they're tailored for you, otherwise they're too long and too wide. And so if you can't afford to buy one and have it tailored for you, it's maybe not the best option to go that way, unless you found a vintage coat that really fits well, but a new coat or a rented coat that wasn't made for you is not gonna work and look good. So now that you know the most formal options, what's a more traditional option? And in the US today, it's definitely the tuxedo. Back in the day, tuxedos were only worn at events after 6 p.m. or when it was dark. Today, that whole thing has become a little more relaxed, but Originally, the proper daywear garment was basically a stroller suit. The stroller suit was the equivalent to the morning coat ensemble, just on a less formal level. Just like a black tie outfit is the less formal ensemble compared to a white tie in the evening. So if you want to stick to traditional rules, you could think about, hey, what time does my wedding start? Let's say it starts at 4 p.m and it's inside where it's dark anyways, I definitely go with a tuxedo. If it starts at 11 a.m., technically a stroller suit would be better. So a stroller suit is very similar to a morning coat. You simply swap out the morning coat for a black jacket with peak lapels. It's usually single-breasted, one button or two buttons, or you can have it double-breasted as well. It's definitely not the same as a tuxedo jacket because it doesn't have silk facings, and it can be part of, let's say, a charcoal suit, for example. It's a very dapper ensemble, and I personally like it very much, and I even wear it as a guest to other weddings. That being said, black tie is a norm for most grooms in the US, so if you don't want to deviate from that, please check out our in-depth black tie video where we walk you through step-by-step -step every item that you want. Basically, you want a black bow tie, you want a tuxedo that's silk-faced with peak lapels or a shawl collar, you don't want anything that's rented, you want wool, because that way you sweat less and you look better and you feel more comfortable. And it really shows in your wedding pictures. If you want to learn more about morning wear, such as a stroller suit or the morning coat, please check out our in-depth morning dress guide on the website. Likewise, if you want accessories, such as the proper bow tie, and you're not quite sure what works for you, check out this video on how to find the bow tie that works for you, along with all the other accessories, such as a cummerbund, the boutonnieres, and the pocket squares. So what's a less formal option compared to a stroller suit and a tuxedo? I hear you and I wore a regular suit for my wedding because even though most people consider a suit to be formal in terms of a wedding day and groom's attire, it's not formal. It's a little more on the casual side. The big advantage of going with a suit for your wedding day is that you can reuse it at the office or for other events. So if you don't have black tie events to go to outside of your wedding, that may be a wiser investment. So if you go with a suit, ideally you should opt for a dark suit, either in navy or in charcoal. I'd stay clear from black because black has more limited uses and charcoal is easier to combine with other items, but it's almost as dark as black. Ideally, you want a double-breasted suit with peak lapels because it's more formal or a single-breasted one. And if you wanna be a little more formal, add a vest to it that matches the suit 
because that screams formality and it's something that you can wear with the vest or without, which gives you more outfit options down the line. In addition, I would wear a white dress shirt with a traditional wedding tie. And they're called that way because they were specifically made for wedding days and they are made of silver and black silk woven in intricate patterns. And they're just very formal, but they're very elegant and the light sparkles in them and they really look good in pictures. For a selection of quality wedding ties, please take a look at our shop here. Ideally, you also want to go with a black pair of shoes, either Darby's or Oxford's. You can learn more about shoes here. Because it's a more celebratorial event, I suggest you go with a shirt for cufflinks, with French cuffs or double cuffs, and a pair of cufflinks that you like. A more formal one would be a darker one, maybe with black, but you can also go with colors. The choice is yours. Just like with the tuxedo, I suggest you go with a pocket square, either in white or a pattern, and a little boutonniere because it's typical for a groom to wear on at his wedding day. Again, make sure that it's not pinned onto your lapel, but that it's small enough so you can put the stem through the buttonhole. Last but not least, as an important detail, you should opt for over-the-calf socks because having hairy calves on your wedding day is never a good look in wedding pictures. So get over-the-calf ones that stay up and for a selection that work for wedding days, please take a look here. If a suit seems too formal to you, I suggest to take it a notch down, maybe wear a blazer combination, maybe with a pair of chinos, but something that's still dressier. In terms of formality, you don't want to look too different from your partner. So if she wears a long wedding dress, you don't want to come with just a dress shirt and no jacket on. That would just look odd. At the same time, you have to be comfortable and she or he has to be too. So at the end of the day, it's all up to you. And these are just suggestions and guidelines that help you look your best. So what about destination weddings or weddings in a warmer climate? People oftentimes like to wear lighter colored jackets, maybe with silk or linen. They like to maybe skip the tie or not even have shoes. And that's something you personally have to decide. And it's basically really up to you on what you think works and what doesn't work. It's your big day. Of course, always keep your surroundings in mind. If you're in the mountains, you probably want to wear something that's more traditional, such as a sorrel suit or a tuxedo, because otherwise you'd be too cold. So last but not least, here are a few groom don'ts that I've seen before and that always make the groom look bad. And you want to look your best because this is a day that you will keep in mind and that you'll show your children and your relatives years from now. First of all, Sneakers or jeans are not something that make you look good, so skip those. The same is true for flip-flops and sandals. The biggest mistake that I've seen in a wedding was when the groom showed up ungroomed. So the name itself implies, please do your homework, clip your fingernails, make sure there are no hangnails, get a nice shave, maybe even with your wedding party, make sure your eyebrows are, are well-groomed and there's no hair coming out of your nose and your ears. It's also best to get a haircut right beforehand because then you look really, really dapper. Another big mistake I see is the boutonniere. Most of the time it's arranged by the florist who really doesn't know much about boutonnieres and then you end up with a mini bouquet that's pinned onto your lapel that even drags it and it just looks goofy. Instead, have them give you just one flower with a single stem, either carnation or rose or whatever it is that you like. I had an orchid on my wedding day and you just pop it through the buttonhole. If it's sewn shut, cut it open with a little pocket knife. And if you don't want to worry about your flower wilting, you can opt for a silk flower that looks like a real one, but it's in fact something that you can wear 365 days a year, also to other weddings and other events. For a selection, please take a closer look here. One thing I see a lot is that grooms and the entire wedding party rent their tux. In my opinion, it's one of the worst things you can do because those tuxes are very cheap, they contain a lot of polyester and nylon, and they make you sweat. Instead, you should opt to purchase one, and you can even have it custom made today. There are lots of companies that start at five, six hundred dollars. That way you get something that fits you, you need a little more time, but you can use our black tie guide to get exactly the details you want. Now, if that's not an option for you, I understand. I had very little money when I married my wife and so I wore a vintage tuxedo that I had found on eBay. 
Now, in order to do that, you really need to understand your measurements and it's an own discipline in itself, but it is possible. You can look dapper as the groom on a very, very low budget, even under $100. But that means you need a bigger time investment. And to do so, you have to read and understand the rules of black tie, which you can do so with our free black tie guide on our website. For example, the tuxedo I'm wearing here right now is from the 1940s. I bought it at a local vintage shop for $60. It was basically brand new. It's a navy blue with a herringbone pattern. It's double-breasted, it has nice wide lapels, and it looks very dapper. The proof is in the pudding. You just have to do your homework, and no matter what your budget is, you can look awesome as a groom. Stay tuned for more videos in our wedding series where we cover anything else that you want to know as the groom when it comes to your wedding.